right. So you're saying this is shot one and two, and it's a sound at the last several frames, all right? I'm still thinking about the last part of shot two. So this is shot one, shot two, last part, okay? About timing and acting. After that, should I just cut to the shot five, which the girl answering the phone, or add a transition shot to show the position of the phone? I think since this is the beginning of the sequence, I think it's okay to show, I mean, you can totally cut to a shot where you see the table and the phone and the phone is moving ring, and it's kind of her POV. You can also have her shoulder in there and her head to kind of show, okay, I'm looking this way. But I don't think, like I said before, that you need to show her walk over there. You can show just the phone ringing and either have her in frame or not over the shoulder and then cut to shot five answering the phone. Um, if you look, if it cuts right away to her on the phone, I would save that for later, where you want to accelerate the pace of the storytelling, because you don't have to show anymore where the phone is. So I would I would wait for that for a later shot. So for this, that's super cute. You get a couple eye darts here. Looks like she just comes in, but her eyes are totally dead. So she can come in into this. Then they can, you know, it looks like she's looking around here. Then you can dart them so she looks around here. There are two of them. She can kind of go back and forth. And now, you know, a bigger dart to show this. And maybe another dart to show here. That's cute. This is a bit weird. Boop, this one. And now it looks like she's looking at me. So keep her eyes down. And then, you know, for stuff like this, it's a bit blocky, like how you have eyebrows. When you're done here, shtoo, over a couple more frames, the eyebrows could continue, kind of ease in a little bit. They're a bit too linear. And her mouth, maybe not doing enough here. You know, there's a moment when she turns around here where it could change the mouth shape, change the mouth a bit more, maybe the, the corners. You can have the chest move a bit more through this. It's a bit simple and just the head moving. Same thing here. When you go forward here, it feels like a forward translate. But if you take a step, you're going to dip and come back up. You're going to have to have an arc. It could be a sideways arc if she's leaning on one leg. Kind of think about that, how the mechanics work. But she is getting up here. Right? Same thing here. She feels very dead. Like if you do this, there's no change here, no change here, no change here. So it's kind of like a dead puppet. So at this point, she could open her eyes maybe a bit more. Maybe it makes her happier, lower eyes. She can kind of get in there. Not sad, but kind of bring up her eyebrows, but she's trying to reach it. She could close her mouth going, ready? Like, you know, like, think about how you would act this out and what you would do. Then that's cool through here. Watch out. You are intersecting that hand. That's cool. That's cute. That's all very cute. It's a great little walk. Love all this. This is really good. See, those types of mechanics, you're back and forth, you're left and right, uh, pushing your, your hips and all that. That's cute. This is just a bit early. I will probably keep this one or two frames more, this leg, and then comes over to really get that push off. Right now, it's almost like a slide. So keep this on the ground for, two, let's say, two more frames. But your mechanics of how you're going left and right here and all that stuff, that's what you want to apply here. Right, so when she goes right through here, it doesn't feel so simple. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Carefully do something like this. That's a big move where the whole thing is moving. So you can do this, but I would move uh, the chest a bit over. And the head is definitely still here. The head drags, it's such a big piece. Boom, and then at the end, she doesn't have to be all straight again, you know what I mean? She can be with the head slightly tilted at the end. And then straightens up into this. And again, I think these hops are too big. How, how low this goes and how quickly you go up here. And if you look at your spacing, if I bring this up here, right? So she goes here, here, here. And look and see, see it's the same height. So spacing wise, boom, you suddenly stop as opposed to continuing to go up a bit and then come back down. But then you're way too high. So that's why I'm saying that you should probably just not go as high. So on this here, your arms would be lower, like this would drag. 
Then you come up to maybe half the height and slower maybe around here, that's when it drops. Because if I watch this right now, it feels like the plate goes up and down so quickly, your, your donuts, whatever she has here, they would just fly around. Boop, boop, like that, it's crazy. Even this is a bit fast. Like From here to here, she would almost break her plate. <clears throat> so you want to think about, well, how gently is she going to push, put this down? Maybe a little bit of a slide or a rotation in there. And she still feels like a little robot <laughs> over your face. And she's reacting too quickly. Like you would have to put the sound around here. Let's do uh, some scrubbing here. Let's see. See that? You have your head move right a frame before the sound starts. So she's anticipating that phone call. So your phone call should be happening here on frame 185. And then she goes, oh, what was that? All right, there's an email. You can sign up, you can start whenever you want. You can submit whenever you want. You get 16 submissions. Either way, a like and subscribe would be awesome. All right, thank you.